This video is sponsored by Setapp. iOS 15 is coming later this fall and Apple just released the public beta. This means that anyone with an Apple ID can install early versions of iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 to try out the new features and provide feedback to Apple as they work on finishing the software for the fall release. Now I've been using the iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 beta, so let's talk about the top features that you'll find in this release. By the way, I have more videos coming on Apple's other big software releases like macOS Monterey and watchOS 8, as well as one on iPadOS specific features. So be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date on those future videos. And also don't miss the video I did on new features coming to AirPods in iOS 15, which I will link below. Now at WWDC, Apple kicked things off by showing a bunch of new features that are built into FaceTime. The coolest one in my opinion was SharePlay. SharePlay lets you share content while you're talking to people over FaceTime. For example, during a FaceTime call, you can start listening to a song or start a TV show or movie. When you do this, that content will play in sync on the screens of the people you're talking to, including on an Apple TV if you want. When listening to music, everyone has the ability to see what's next and add songs to the queue. SharePlay also lets you share your screen with everyone in a FaceTime call as well. So you can look at a menu on Uber Eats before placing a group order or plan a vacation while seeing and talking to each other. This lets you hang out with people virtually while enjoying content together. Apple says this won't just work for its own services like Apple Music and Apple TV Plus, but any developer can include SharePlay into their own apps. They announced Disney+, Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, TikTok, and more as already being on board. I talked to Apple's Craig Federighi about these features after the WWDC keynote, and if you missed that, it's definitely worth checking out to get Apple's perspective. If you're interested in seeing it, I will have a link down below. Now, there are several more additions coming to FaceTime, including spatial audio, which makes it sound like you're sitting in the same room with each other. Voices are spread out to sound like they're coming from the position that they're spread out on your screen. So if one person is on the left and the other is on the right, that's where their voices will seem to be coming from. One of the biggest changes is that not only will you be able to schedule FaceTime calls for the future, but you're able to create an invite link that will work on Android and Windows PCs, making FaceTime a legitimate free competitor to services like Zoom, at least for personal use. Oh, and you'll even be able to use portrait mode during a FaceTime call to blur your background and enable voice isolation to eliminate background noise. Next, let's talk about iMessage and Messages. First, the Messages app sees a new feature that actually isn't in the app itself. This feature is called Shared With You and it takes links, images, and other content shared with you in Messages and creates areas in corresponding apps that make them easier to find. For example, let's say I send someone a link to the podcast I do with John Rettinger, Geared Up. Usually it's difficult to find that link in an active message thread, but in iOS 15, if you go into the podcast app, you'll see a new shared with you row where you'll see podcasts that your friends and family have shared with you in messages. Now this also works with photos, Safari, Apple News, Apple Music, and the TV app. So it's now way easier to find the content and recommendations that people have shared with you rather than endlessly scrolling through your messages to try to find them. Inside of messages itself, you can now pin content that's shared as well to make them easier to find later. Messages now has photo collections in iOS 15 too. If a friend shares multiple images, it will appear as a collage or stack of images that you can swipe through right in line tap them to view them as a grid or add a tap back reaction. Memoji also pick up some new features. You now have multicolor headwear, custom clothing, and accessibility options like cochlear implants, oxygen tubes, and soft helmets. Now before we talk about the next feature, I wanna give a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Setapp. Now I've been using Setapp for a couple of years now on my Mac, and it's a fantastic service that when it started gave you access to about 60 apps for a monthly fee. Fast forward to today and Setup now has over 200 apps that are a part of the service, which is insane, but even better, they've also recently started adding iOS apps to set up as well for the same $9.99 monthly fee. That gives you access to apps like iStat Menus, which lets you monitor just about every vital statistic on your Mac. And also one of my favorite apps for keeping everything running smoothly, 
Clean My Mac X. This one keeps your Mac fast, frees up disk space, and keeps you protected from spyware and malware. But the point of setup isn't just to give you a bunch of random apps. The right tool for just about any task you're doing on your Mac can be found in Setapp's collection. If you're a Mac and iOS user, Setapp is a game changer, giving you all the best apps and tools to keep you productive and help you find your flow. You can get a seven day free trial by visiting setapp.com or by visiting the link down in the description below. I cannot live without Setapp and there's a good chance you'll feel the same. Once again, big thank you to Setapp for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up, let's talk notifications. Right off the bat, home screen notifications take up way less space in iOS 15, allowing you to see more of your notifications at a glance, rather than each one being gigantic and bulbous. Apple is making notifications easier to manage and less disruptive in a couple of ways. First, there's the notification summary where you can choose which notifications become part of a scheduled delivery. For example, if you only want to see notifications from any news and magazine apps each morning, you can do that rather than having them come in all day on the fly. The most relevant notifications will be at the top and you get to set the schedule that you want them to appear. One important note here, notifications that come from people won't be caught up in the summary. So there's nothing to worry about there. The notification summary is for app notifications. Developers are able to flag high priority notifications. For example, your smart camera letting you know that there's someone on your property. If you find an app that's abusing the high priority flag with notifications that you think aren't important, you can go in and turn them off. One other major feature as it pertains to notifications is focus. Now, I don't know about you, but often I am trying to get work done and then get distracted by a notification that then takes me down a rabbit hole for 20 minutes. Focus allows you to specify what you're doing and what apps and people you allow to get a hold of you while you're doing it. So if you're at work, you can just have the apps you need at work sending notifications while TikTok and Instagram stay silent. Or if you're reading or gaming or just chilling at home, you can have different focus settings with those. When you enable a focus, it automatically is set across all your devices. And one of the coolest parts is that you can even have different home screens for a specific focus. So when you're in a work focus, you can completely hide any non-work apps. And then when you get home and switch focus, you can have your casual apps displayed and put work away. When in a focus, your status will be shown in messages to anyone who is both in your contacts and isn't one of the people who you allow notifications from when in that particular focus. Up next, let's talk about one of the coolest features in iOS 15, live text. Live text uses advanced on-device machine learning to deeply understand text found in images across iOS and on the web. So now you can copy, look up, and even translate from images containing text. You can even tap the image of a phone number to make a call or the image of a web address to open the page in Safari. This is a feature that actually came up in a real life scenario for me recently. Usually when I'm testing features, I just go in and play with them. But recently I needed to call a landscaper to come out and trim some hedges and do some weeding. I knew I had taken a picture of someone's business card a few weeks ago. I went into Spotlight and searched the word landscaping and it brought up the business card and then I was able to tap on the phone number on that business card in the image to call them up right there. Super convenient. What's even cooler though is this also works on the web. So if you're in Safari and there's text or information in the image on a web page, you can select it, copy it, tap on it to email or call someone, etc. It even recognizes handwritten text. Now let's talk about Apple Wallet because I think these updates will be a major game changer. Apple has been on a mission to replace the physical wallet and I think iOS 15 is the biggest step forward with the addition of keys and ID cards. So starting in iOS 15, you'll be able to store things like house keys, office keys, and car keys in your Apple Wallet. You just tap your iPhone to your door lock and it opens. If it's a HomeKit enabled lock, you can even share digital keys with family members and guests. Hotel keys are similar, but what's cool there is that when your room is ready, you can get a notification and key added right into your wallet. No need to do a traditional check-in at a desk, just go right to your room. Then there's ID cards. This feature will roll out in the US in participating states, allowing you to add your ID to your wallet app to use in person when you travel. 
For example, when going through TSA security, you can pull up your driver's license in the wallet app and then tap to scan it. Apple allows you to present just the information that's needed. So if you're going into a venue that just wants to confirm that you're over 21, all that gets shared with that venue is your photo and birth date since there's no need for them to see your license number or home address. One question I hear from a lot of people is, what if my phone dies? Well, two things there. If you have an Apple Watch, the keys and IDs are synced over to that as well, so you can still use them. But also your iPhone has a power reserve that comes into play after your battery dies and allows you to access your stored keys for up to five additional hours. Now there are a bunch of other features coming in iOS 15, including a new look for Safari, expanded privacy settings, new driving and walking direction experiences and maps, a way better weather app, and a lot more. As I mentioned, iOS and iPadOS 15 public betas are available now, and the final versions will drop in the fall, if I had to guess, in about two and a half months. Now let me know what you think of iOS 15. Have you been using the developer beta? Are you gonna be downloading the public beta? Or are you waiting for public release in a few months? Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite feature is, and I'll meet you there for further discussion.